One day in 1994, while staying in Vrindavan, a small town in Uttar Pradesh, I went exploring on my own. I came upon a quiet square. It was midday and the Indian heat was sweltering. I saw a woman lying alone, swaddled in fabric. In the background of this shot, you can see a bundle of clothes. That's her. I moved towards her and saw she was dying. She was extremely old and clearly in her final moments. I went to fetch her some water when a group of children appeared. They thought nothing of it. They explained that elderly women and widows often come here to die. She could no longer talk. Sometimes known as the City of Widows, the town is a magnet for bereaved women. Some 15,000 live there, and thousands more travel there each year. Legend has it that Krishna, the Hindu god of love and compassion, spent his childhood in Vrindavan. Pilgrims flock from all over to pay their respects. Some of the widows are just children. In some provinces of India, young girls only a few years old are married off to much older men. They are often widowed by the time they're ten. Left to fend for themselves, they come to Vrindavan in search of solace and support. The more fortunate live in charitable homes, but most beg in the street. They wear only white, and their heads are shaven. There's something extremely elegant about them. Despite unimaginable hardship, these women persevere and devote themselves to living the truly spiritual life. Just as some Buddhists and Hindus scale Mount Kailash to perish in the cold, these widows pass away in heat of the sun. I was staying in one of the town's many ashrams, or spiritual retreats. I had befriended a local woman, who was close to 100 years old. She had no teeth and seemed to drink nothing but milk. I paid the milkman every month so she could get a litre or so when she needed. Every day, she would wind her way through the streets, and often I would follow her. No cars are allowed in the town, so I travelled miles each day on foot, tracing her path. She led me in two streets visitors would never normally see. Through her eyes I saw a lot of things. She had lived a difficult life but felt no bitterness. She was very sweet. That day, though, it was just the dying woman and me. There was an overwhelming stillness to the scene. At some point, out of nowhere, the monkeys to the right of the shot appeared. And a moment later, the woman passed away. It was a very strange feeling, but in the context of non-Western philosophy it made sense. Just as some Buddhists and Hindus scale Mount Kailash in Tibet and perish in the cold, these widows pass away under the heat of the sun. I sent for the local authorities to collect the body. While I was waiting, my eye was drawn towards the gate at the edge of the square. I wandered over and pulled out the small lyca I used to shoot with in those days. The serenity of the scene spoke to me and I took this shot, with myself to the side. The gate was a threshold, a juncture between life and death. I had just witnessed this woman pass through it. Pamela Singh CV Pamela Singh Detail from the Marfil Coat 199,495 Photograph Pamela Singh CPR I born New Delhi, 1962 Trained Parsons in the International Center of Photography, both in New York. Influences Julia Margaret Cameron, Anna Mendieta, Francesca Woodman, Richard Long, Andy Goldsworthy. High point my work being acquired by museum collections early in my career. Low point I just don't go there. Top tip shoot from the hip and have a good time.